What's going on? Al Akkad, back at your ass. I'm on your ass. But anyway, uh, author of Holography, um, the whole writing of the arts and sciences as one educational discipline. So not, you know, multiple different fields of study. No, we're all combining it into one thing and studying it as one. Al Akkad, and it's uh, symbolized by this uh, yin yang here. Um, obviously, you think that there's a duality where actually it's a whole singular thing. So make sure you get this book. Uh, the website is um, tracking at the bottom of the screen here. Holographer.com slash the hyphen book. And, you know, so you can make a purchase. Um, you can use my cash app. I have uh, PayPal, um, Venmo, Zelle, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, I'll accommodate you if you do whatever you want to uh, submit the payment. Like for those of you that live internationally, because I had that, uh, it, you know, we solved the issue, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I can get this out to you if you you don't live in the United States. I've already sent books out um, internationally. So get it. But um, topic of this uh, thing is going to be this yet again. I keep making videos about this because I keep having things to say about it because people keep coming to me about this. I keep getting messages, emails, um, comments about this here. So it's only fitting that I would come back and keep talking about this. So this is obviously The Balls of Fire, Science of Life and Death by Judy K. King, author of the ISIS thesis. So this is the second sequel, obviously. And um, I really wanted to focus on what the title is for this video is the semiotics of the ISIS thesis in the balls of fire. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite books. It's probably my favorite book outside of the book I just wrote. It's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a favorite. Yeah, I'm going to say that. You know what I'm saying? Hell, I even said I even went as far as to say this is like my Bible. But I'm explain why I said that in this, um, this broadcast right here. Um, patreon.com slash holography if you interested in what i have to say about root work and that type of thing um i got plenty of videos i should be over like 20 maybe close to 30 videos um also have um if you're interested if you want to deal with the doff star legacy videos all the videos that were taken down from this channel um they're all a course now and like i said i put them on my patreon so if you're interested get at me dog but anyway key thing about books like this in the isis thesis is that you want to focus on semiotics and let me tell you why you want to focus on semiotics in a book like this because first of all if you look towards the back of the book the author judy k king tells you that she is a part of the semiotic society of america semiotic society of america yeah so that lets you know, um, for me, I don't know if you was paying attention to that. See, when people read books, they don't pay attention to all the nuances and the hidden gems and the, you know, saying the things that you need to pay closer attention to. You know what I mean? So if the author is telling you what society she's a part of or what group she's a part of, I'm pretty sure the group or society she's a part of or he's a part of. Is, is telling about what the purpose of the book is and what angle it's coming from. So she's saying she's part of the society, uh, excuse me, semiotic society of America. So that's letting you know that she's part of a group of people or organization where they focus on semiotics, signs, symbols, and other things related to meaning, right? So she's part of that society. So you should go into this book, as, you know, me recommending it to you because I also sell this book as an ebook. Go in it with a semiotic mind frame. Now, semiotics is simply the study of meaning. Meaning what things mean, what do they symbolize, what do they represent? You talk about biosemiotics, you're talking about the signs um, and symbols when you're dealing with biology which includes includes microbiology and everything else surrounding that. Now, this book here is a book that deals a lot with microbiology. It also deals with the quantum realm, quantum realm. And, you know, it deals with the signs that you find in that in that realm. And all she did was compare 
what modern science has to say about quantum and microbiology, nanobiology, if you want to go even depthically, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't want to go that depthically. If you want to go depthically, she, all she did was combine, you know, that biology and that quantum physics with ancient Kemet or ancient Egyptian um, uh, 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 hieroglyphs and the metu netter and whatever you want to call it. Those markings, engravings, and um, inscriptions that you find in the pyramids, um, the monuments, the tombs. You know what I'm saying? You even come out with the Pert M. Haru, which is the um, Egyptian Book of the Dead or whatever, all that. So that's what she did. She made that comparison because there was meaning in both of those subjects of your biology or three subjects biology, your quantum physics or quantum mechanics, and your ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. So there's a uh, a combination. There's 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 threads tying them all together. That's what she did. Now, above anything else, I would if this is a, a subject that you already read on, you already read the books, you already listened to me talk about it before, you listened to other people talk about it before, you have the books. Focus on the semiotics. This is the best way to read this book. Because I, like I said, I didn't got emails and comments and messages about how the book is too dense, or you know, what I'm saying it's it's too packed with, you know, complex information, and it needs some simplification. Like it needs to be, you know, simplified, right? And so that's what I attempted to do throughout my whole run of dealing with this book, of all the videos that I've ever made with this book. You know what I'm saying? And even also the Dream Genome Thesis, which is included in this book holography it's uh chapter 18 so i include the revised updated and expanded edition of the dream genome thesis which if you don't know what the dream genome thesis is it's my thesis after this thesis so as i'm reading this book in the isis thesis back in 2020 or not even that it's all the way back in 2015 when i was speaking with the author judy k king um, I had co uh, email correspondence with her. Actually, this book here is the one that she sent me for free. You already know this news. Um, she sent this to me. Um, I ain't never had to pay for this, you know, just putting that out there. Um, my dream genome thesis is a continuation. For those of that don't know, it's a continuation of the ISIS thesis and the balls of fire. And it takes place or it deals with your actual dreams or what I like to call oneirons that you have every night. You you probably woke up with a significant dream this morning. You know what I'm saying? Did you write it down? Did you record it? You know what I'm saying? So my I took the information further into dealing with dreams because that's something universal too. Like she doesn't really deal with dreams so much in this book. So it was only fitting if you can take something in a new direction, go ahead and write it. Play it. Play it. Go ahead and write it. But again, what you should be focusing on with a work like this is the semiotics. That's the string that ties all the subjects in this book and the ISIS thesis book all together. Again, holography. So let me just name all the different subjects that she would have to have dealt with in order to come up with her thesis. So first of all, philosophy. That's the first word I came towards when I opened this book. So philosophy. What else? You need genetics you're studying dna um physics quantum physics right literature because she's tying a lot of this stuff into literature that we're seeing throughout excuse me throughout the millennia and throughout the centuries that go back to this understanding of you know this whole goal of the human or the thing that thinks it's a human to go through a process of transformation and alchemy right you also have to study um religion she deals with all the religions in this book, mainly Christianity, how it relates to alchemy, you know what I'm saying? Asian stuff, right? You know, dealing with the diamond body, how over there in Asian cultures, they're attempting to achieve the diamond body, which is another way of saying the philosopher's stone. This is stone, diamond, the connection. Um, what else? You have to know the whole biology because, again, if you're talking about genetics, you have to be talking about biology, microbiology, you know, to be more specific. You have to also know linguistics. 
and symbology. Why? Because we're dealing with the hieroglyphics in this, aren't we? Aren't we? Isis thesis is right here. She tell you that she's the author of that too. You have to be dealing with all these multiple subjects. What other subjects you got to deal with? So these are all different subjects in a college setting. Like just in a college setting, you have this field of study, that field of study, this field of study, and that field of study. So when she says she's a part of the semiotic society of America on the back of her book, can you see where she says that? Semiotics towards the last line. King is a member of the symbiotic society of America. That's the key to this book. That's the key to the book, baby. That's the key. Stick it in and you turn it and it opens up. Now you know exactly what it means. Because meaning is the study in the subject of this book. Not the genetics by itself, not the quantum physics by itself, not the American or world literature. You know what I'm saying? It's the semiotics. It's the meaning. So the thread of meaning ties everything together. So when I came out with this book, that was the attempt to show everybody who wants to read it that we're using the thread of meaning to tie everything as one whole. And we read it using the holographic approach. This is why writing is in the title. Because we're dealing with the writing of the meaning. See, writing is not just you picking up a pencil or you typing keys on a, a, a keyboard or your phone. Writing is, is, is it's inscription, it's recording. When you make a song and you burn it to a CD, you know, back in, you know, the early 2000s, Joseph, you know, about 99, 2000, you know what I'm saying? When that Napster file sharing thing was a hit, love LimeWire. LimeWire was, I love, if LimeWire was a person, I would treat it to like a five-star five course dinner but anyway recording and writing are one and the same whenever you're writing or recording or you're jotting something down or you're pressing something into wax you're putting something on a flash drive you we, even back in the day we had those cds that was writable and rewritable so they were basically flash drives before flash drives became flash drives but it was in a disc form so you're writing things on the sun you're recording you're engraving you're inscribing and scripting that's what writing is. It's not just you using a pencil. You know what I'm saying? Your DNA can be considered a writing, a linguistic writing, because this is where I first kind of got wind of that when I read this book back in 2015. The fact that, you know, your DNA can be looked at as a linguistic structure, like a syntax, as a syntax to it. So that means your DNA, or as far as, you know, the genetics and everything, is no different from the language I'm speaking now. Whether you're speaking Spanish, uh, Fr Francais, France, you, French, you speak in Japanese, Taiwanese, you know what I'm saying? Legalese, for those of you that are into the whole Moorish sovereignty thing and you want to read Black's Law Dictionary all day, it, all those languages. And the, for those of you that speak nonsensically, because that's a language too. Y'all be out here saying stuff, it don't be making really that much sense. So it's nonsensicalese, you know what I mean? And if I spoke nonsensicalese, I bet we could have a very uh, fruitful and productive and constructive, because we build, very fruitful and constructive nonsensicalese conversation. But anyway, semiotics is the heart of this book. So for those of you that were sitting here telling me or commenting or saying that this book is too dense or it's too complex, you should be approaching it as I would recommend to you. Approach it as you would approach it semiotics meaning semiosis that is the signification of things signification the first four word uh, four letters of that word in order is s i g n sign you know what i'm saying here i'll show you in my book where i have a whole um picture of what semiosis or like a, the definition in pictorial form so right here it says, what does that say? Semiosis, the process of signification in language or literature. That's what you that's the focus of a book like this. But we're going beyond just the book. Semiosis should be the focus of your entire existence. Again, this is the reason why this book was written. Semiosis of your entire existence, whether this is a living existence, whether you're in the realm of the dead. Whether you are coming into the, the world through birth or come or leaving it through death, 
Semiosis ties it all together. Semiosis is another way of saying the thread of meaning. So me, Alakad, I use the thread of meaning to tie everything together. There's nothing outside of the thread of meaning. Because now I would have to ask you, well, what, what is something that means nothing? Tell me something that doesn't mean anything. That's my challenge to everybody watching this or whoever reads this book or whoever sitting here spec hating when they watch my Instagram or this YouTube. They don't donate. They don't like nothing. Whatever. You know what I mean? That's my challenge to you. Name me something that means absolutely nothing except absolutely nothing itself. Because it brings it all. Hold on. I even bring up a, a, a trick question for you. Hold on. Let me go to my Instagram right quick. Da -da 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 Hold on. Because this is a way of clearing up all the nonsensical ease out here. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that speak nonsensical ease. I mean, I don't know how to speak it fluently, but I know when I hear it. You know what I'm saying? When I hear it, uh, you know what I'm saying? I know what it is. You know what I mean? Hold on. I'm looking for a particular post where I said this. Make sure I got the wording correctly. here's what it, i think i remember I, I just trying to make sure i got the wording correctly hold on hold on da, 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 da. where is it oh yeah here we go how can something be non-existent if non-existence exists so notice how you have to say jesus christ does not exist so that means does not exist has to exist for you to say what you just said so that brings me back to what I just said. How can something be non-existent if non-existence exists? It's a little trick question for you. You know what I'm saying? A little, little mind fuck for you. You know what I'm saying? Because some people, like I said, they speak nonsensical ease, and I just want to make sure we clear that up. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that, you know, when you're saying something, it's saying it's being said logically and completely not halfway and then not making any sense when you say it. Here we go. It's right here on my phone screen. How can something be non-existent if non-existence exists? So for non-existence to be a part of your sentence or be a part of you making a meaning of a statement, Jesus Christ does not exist, Non-existence has to exist. You care to debate me on it? You care to, you know, say have a, a differing opinion? Well, and while you do that, like I said, we talking about this for anybody that's just coming in. You need to be able to leave, read this with semiotics on your mind. Semiotics should be at the forefront of your mind when you read something like this. You know what I'm saying? That's why in this book, again, you know, it's all about focusing on that key thing. You know what I'm saying? Although this is kind of like more of a basis in this book, too. This is where we get deeply into that semiosis, that signification. Because let me say this one more time. Everything you do. Everything done to you. Everything you observe. Everything you can call a thing. Is a sign. You are surrounded by a bunch of signs. But the tragedy is, do you know how to read the signs? So picture you going all the way to Kemet the, in the Temple of Luxor, you know what I'm saying, with the group or whatever. And you're being hassled by, you know, the Ar 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 Arabs over there trying to sell you stuff. But you could have stayed right here in the, in the comfort of your own home or at work or wherever you drive it. And knowing that you know how to read the signs. Not saying you shouldn't go to Egypt to see the hieroglyphs. Not saying that. I'm just saying that you don't need to go all the way over there to read the signs around you or to get an understanding of, uh, excuse me, signification. The science of significance. Everything has a significance to it. The significance precedes everything around you and everything happening around you. 
So as a holographer, for me, I'm reading everything around me at all times. I'm a reader. I want to teach you how to read. Like the hey Arnold, hey, teach you how to read. Teach me how to read. No, no, teach me how to read. That's what I'm here to do. This is what my book is here to do. You know what I'm saying? So that you don't get misconstrued or get misinterpretations of everything that's happening around you and everything you go through. And it's not just exclusive to your physical living. We can go beyond the worlds of this, of this physical shit. You know what I'm saying? So obviously a book like this deals with signs of death and, you know, what to do at death uh, transition and that type of thing. Right. But there's still signification there wherever you at. Even in your dream, your dream is nothing but signs and symbols, no different from your waking life in the physical. So why would your death or you being in the afterlife be any different? There's still signs there. Do you know how to read them, though? Do you know how to interpret them? Do you know how to approach them? Do you know how to read? I want to teach you how to read. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not just you reading a book. It's you being able to pick up certain hidden signs or hidden meanings based on what's, what you're reading. Because people just read this and just get what's called dead lettering, where it's like you just read it for the letter and not for the meaning or the spirit behind the letter. That's why you have the Bible is one of the, you know, is it Harry Potter books or is it the Bible as the highest selling books of all time? Uh, Harry Potter got is, is on that Bible as I know. Hey, you can go all the way to Taiwan or something. Somebody got a Harry Potter series up, up in there. But anyway, they the Bible is everywhere, right? It's in every hotel and it's, it's everywhere, right? But everybody doesn't know how to read the metadata or the spirit or the meaning behind everything in the Bible, in the, in the Bible, right? They just read it for the outer exoteric letter. They don't understand the esoteric meaning behind it, right? So once you be able to do that, that gives you the ability to read. I, it is excited. You're excited, yes? Read, yes? You let it read? Hold on, you put it. Open book and read. No. Read. Right? You know how to read. And that's all you have to do when you come to anything of this level of complexity. Learn how to read it. Know when there's meaning being expressed. You know what I mean? Because me too, when I first started reading this book, it was, you know, I figured it was, you know, I, I had the feeling it was very complex and dense. You know what I'm saying? It's probably one of the most complex and dense books I ever got my hands on, right? But still, after all these years, it's like, what is the key controlling idea of a book like this in Isis Thesis? It's the semiosis, the semiotics, the thread of meaning. This is how we can find all the connections between two different religions. Like, for example, What's how does Christianity and Islam relate to each other other than sharing some of the same words? Or we can even go further than that. We can deal with Christianity and uh Tao or Taoism or something like that. You know what I'm saying? We can deal with Christianity and um some made up religion online somewhere, you know what I'm saying? But what is the thread that ties all of what I just said together? Signification, meaning. Go through the whole Islamic literature and the Quran and all of that. You should be able to extract meaning from that book in those lit in that literature and all the things that go into that, all the iconography, all of it. And it is from there that we can also make a determination on what level a lot of people are on out here. So if you only get the exoteric meaning out of it, then I know that you're not on the degree. Uh, excuse me, the degree that I'm on. Because I'm able to read something like that and extract esoteric meaning from it. It's just like being able to take the tea leaves, put it in the tea bag, and put it in the hot water. All the essences of that tea gets in the water. And then you can just throw the tea bag away. Because the tea bag would, would be equivalent just to the letters and all the you know outer physical objects and the outer meanings. But now the essence of those meanings are all in that tea. And I'm sipping on it. You know what I'm saying? green tea sipper that's 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 my you know what i mean it should be a job it should be a career where i go around the world like mark weens and test everybody's green tea and see which one is the best you 
Now, what I love about what I'm doing with holography is the fact that nothing is excluded. Somebody asked me a question, like, you know, what's the difference between occultism and holography? There is no difference, except if you want to deal with the ranking. That means occultism has to get beneath what holography is because holography deals with the whole thing. Occultism only deals with secret information. But secret information is not the only type of information that exists. There's esoteric and exoteric. There's occult and mundane. This includes all of it. Because it wouldn't be much of a grand unifying theorem that, uh, you know, I have it here on the book. It wouldn't be much of a grand unifying theorem if it didn't include the occult and the mundane in one. So the only difference between um, holography and the occult is that holography is a section or a category or a subsection or a sub part of what holography is. That's the difference. <laughs> Well, I mean, what, what, why would there be any other difference than that? You, you're really just dealing with a difference between if it's a part of something or you're dealing with something that's the whole of it all. That's what we're dealing with with that. See, with holography, we try and do, we, it's not even a try. We tie in all things together. Isn't that what a theory of everything or a... Um, uh, um, a, uh, what's it called? A grand unifying theorem like the Gabriel um, Oyibo, God Almighty grand unifying theorem. It's it's all these grand these theories, right? That attempts to tie everything and explain everything in the universe and the cosmos, but they fall short. You want to know why they fall short? Because they only deal with the physical. Now, to Oyibo's credit, he does you know attempt to you know try to combine some spiritual stuff into what his Gaga is, you know, the grand unifying theorem, but I, I had to do him one better. Let me give you the holography unified theorem. So nothing is out of the reach of what it's talking about. This explains everything. There's nothing outside of the reach of this holography. Now I'm challenging you to name something and I'll explain to you directly why it's not outside of the range of holography. Because I asked you earlier, tell me something that means nothing. This is why, you know, one of my issues with people that want to be nihilistic or they want to be atheistic or whatever is them saying that things don't mean anything. And it's like, again, you're you're just like the Christian. You haven't penetrated the letter. You haven't penetrated the understanding of why you are and why you're in this, the position you're in in life. Like all these, there's, there's um, signification to everything. Because you're on, if, as you're um, operating on the physical, all signification, none but symbols. Everything you come across, everything you are, everything someone else is doing or things you're observing is nothing but a bunch of symbols. That's it. Symbols that contain meanings that that's where you need to be in for as your understanding. So again, you need to approach this book with semiosis. On the front of your mind. What is the meaning of your genetics? Why do you even have a set of genetics? Why do you even have people that from ancient times inscribing things on walls and tombs and temples and all that? What's the meaning of that? What is the precise meaning? The semiotic value. That's another way of saying it. What is the semiotic value of this book? What is the semiotic value of my necklace? What is the semiotic value of this microphone? What is the semiotics of my glasses? What is the value of it? Me as a, you know, they, you know, if you go into a lot of Muslim adjacent religions or systems, the Asiatic black man, what does that mean? What's the semiotic value of that? Just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and zero. What are the semiotic values, not the quantity values? What are the semiotic values of each of those digits? That's what the holography attempts to tie everything into, the meaning of it. So think about the dream you just had waking up this morning. What did it mean? You want to tell me a dream didn't mean anything? Huh? You're saying your dream meant absolutely nothing. There was nothing significant about it had no signification, no semiotic value whatsoever. 
Or is it just that you haven't took the time and the patience and the studies to actually read the symbols in your dream? So with a book like this, what she was attempting to show is that the semiotic values in one set of studies is starting to line up with the semiotic values of this other set of studies. So genetics, DNA, uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics. They're starting, you're starting to see some symbiotic um, correspondence to what we deal with in the whole ancient Egypt and beyond. You know what I'm saying? That's all she was doing. So when you simplify it like that, which I like to call holographing, I just holographed it, you, you know, because holographing is simply taking a bunch of details and a bunch of things and a bunch of different miscellaneous information and trying to find the one word or one concept that explains it all. So when you do that, you're holographing. So when I say that all this is based on meaning, the controlling idea is the holographic principle in this book. It's the meaning. That's what we're doing. So why does it why does it come to us all dense and complex when we read it? Because you didn't pre you didn't preface your reading or you didn't come into it with a semiotic understanding. Now, you, like I say, after you watch this, you're you can go out back out into the world or on YouTube, you know, what I'm saying or Instagram or wherever and listen to what everybody else has to say about anything. Whether they're talking about spirituality, something occult, uh, something, um, you know, just dealing with what's going on in the world. The reason why black people was enslaved, any anything, the Egyptian kings, they want to be goddesses, whatever, whatever it is. Right. But you understanding meaning and symbiosis and signification, you can take it a step uh, further than what they're dealing with, because you're dealing with the thread that ties it all together. So regardless, if we're talking about ancient Japan, we're talking about um, 18th century Timbuktu, we're talking about Antarctica, doesn't matter what we're talking about. We're talking about, uh, uh, um, you know, bacteria, good bacteria, bad bacteria, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about genetic codes, secret occult, doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's all tied together with meaning. Now, some people out there that was accusing me of being like um, some sort of materialist and not understanding metaphysics well or spirituality quite well, because they thought that I was simply just focusing on, you know, the, the, the microscopic organisms that are talked about in this book or whatever, or, or in this whole ISIS thesis uh, balls of fire. But it's nonsensicalese because or what they're saying is nonsensicalese because I was never strictly on the level of the physics. There's tell me something more metaphysical than meaning itself. Meaning doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be astral. It doesn't have to meaning transcend chakras, y'all. Tell me something that doesn't mean anything. Now, the point of having a you know what we you would call a theory of everything or a grand unifying theorem is the fact that once you have it, you can explain anything else. So that gives you a superior viewpoint of everything else. So it's just like being at the top of the, the tallest um, lighthouse on a beach somewhere. You have the light. The light is already at the top. So now you can survey everything, you know what I'm saying, uh, on the beach or on the land because you're the beacon. You're at the beacon stage of your understanding. Or you can go even further than that and just be like you to star up in the, the heavens or the celestial realm and you can see everything on down. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand with meaning and signification. Tell me something that means nothing except nothing itself. So when you read about these microscopic organisms or gametes you know a gamete is uh based on the word gamos which means marriage so that means your sperm cell and your egg cell are both gametes they marry each other so if we're talking about all these microscopic organisms and microscopic algorithms and microscopic uh happenings you know what i'm saying as is in this book are we sitting here just simply focusing on the microscopic 
the microscopical stuff? Or are we trying to extract meaning out of that? Because you can go to the nearest university right now, wherever you live at, go to the nearest university. Yeah, they're studying microbiology. They're studying genetics. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're studying all of that. But do they know the signification of what they're studying? Do they know the meaning of what they're actually doing? I'd say perhaps not. They only know the surface physical level of what they're actually dealing with. There's a whole semiotic value to the entire thing of genetics. Genetics is based on writing and linguistics, recording, inscribing, narrative. So before you have a physical genetics in your body, you must have the meaning or the abstract or the principles of writing narrative and language these things must precede your genetics for genetics to be a physical thing in the physical realm so that means your genetics is nothing but a symbol of a more abstract meaning that's it so even for those of y'all that's focused just on your magic and your occult that's nothing but symbology because again you go into a religion they may not know the esoteric or the occult meaning of the cross or the uh, the star or the um, hexagram. They don't know what that actually means. Like people still think that the hexagram is just for Jewish people. That's it. No, 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 no. It precedes them. That's an ancient symbol right there. How how you gonna have just a group of humans going to claim that for themselves and nobody can deal with that symbol? What? It's nonsense. Nonsensical ease to be more exact. So even in the occult, you can now look at the hexagram and look at it on its esoteric and occult side. And once you understand what the hexagram is, you'll see that a lot of people out here or the masses of people have no clue what they're actually looking at. They've, the meaning is lost on them. The original meaning is lost. But it's right there in their face if they would just see it that way. So, for example, you have one triangle going upwards yeah, and it's crossed by a triangle triangle going downwards. It's crossed. So now the meaning of cross is in this hexagram, just like the Christian cross. So that means they're not really different in meaning. That's signification. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with over here. So let me repeat myself. Whenever you're reading the Balls of Fire or the Isis Thesis or any book related to it, start it off with the understanding of meaning, symbiosis, signification. These are symbols, buddy. They're not just genetic happenings or genetic um, or microscopic proteins. No, they have they encase meaning just like you do, just like the words on the page do, just like the book itself is a symbol of meaning. So, again, I ask you what tell me something that doesn't mean anything. Said uh, these. Hold on. These genetics be talking and shit their own little civilization, micro occult, midi chlorines, and the super friend. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with you right there because this is what this book is really kind of putting you on to. Yo, they just put out the what's the movie? Um, uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantum Mania. Go watch that. That movie encapsulates everything. You just said that comment that was just that just came through. I I bet you I I tell you that. Regardless of you know how good the movie is, I mean we can have a debate about how good it is or if the story makes sense. But the whole quantum mania it's in the title, so it's dealing with the quantum realm. So everything you just said about you know genetics and metachlorines and microcult and beings on that level, yes, of course. 
in fact, I would even go so far as to say, um, you know, if you don't already know, that world provides a model for this physical world. She says this is what she's talking about in this book. So before you have multicellular organisms like you and I act operating physically like a human or a cat or an elephant or some other micro, or excuse me, a multicellular organism, first you got to start out as one cell before you have multiple. Now, where is this? Where, where do we bring this home? Where is this close to home for everybody else, for anybody, right? Realize you started in your physicality as a singular cell organism. You were a zygote in your mother's womb. So it has semiotic value to look at how you became, how you went from single cell to multi cell. And what does that signify when that happens? Because why didn't you just set, stay a single, single cell organism in your mother's womb? How come you started going through mitosis and started dividing into this trillion cell, billion cell organism? Why didn't you just say singular? That's what we need to be studying. What's the point of taking a single celled organism and turning it into a multicellular organism? So the importance of studying microbiology is the importance of studying where you originate, where your physicality starts. Because it's fun to deal with, you know, you know, the grimoires. I got a couple grimoires, you know, for those of you that practice magic or any other type of esoteric practice. You know, you, you know, you pride yourself in having grimoires on top of grimoires on top of grimoires. You look for people to give you bookless videos and all that stuff. And I'm like. Let's let's progress into uncharted territory. Everybody already know all that. Let's go into different directions. Let's progress. Let's advance. Because it's stagnation out here. It's one of the reasons why I came out with the Dream Genome Thesis is because we need to go into some more advanced concepts and subjects instead of just circling around the same ones all day, every day. You know? I don't hear nobody out here talking about semiosis, semiotic value, significance. I don't hear nobody talking about it. When it's the thing that or the subject or the concept that ties everything together. I don't know how much of you are familiar with literature or poetry or anything like that. But I remember when I was in school and one of the um, things we had to deal with uh, or figures is Edgar Allan Poe. I think she does talk about Edgar Allan Poe in this book, too. But one of the things that's attributed to Edgar Allan Poe is the is something he said. How is a raven like a school desk or something like that? Like, how is a raven like a bird, like a crow or a raven? How is a raven like a school desk? And I would simply say they both express meaning. The raven and the school desk are symbols for abstract principles. And they are tied in that. That's how a raven is like a school desk, like an ant, like a pencil, like a pair of glasses like a human head like the ocean like the stars in the sky that's how they're all tied together so now we have a unified thing right don't we see with holography you get to go on the exercise to tie two seemingly separate things together that's what a true grand unified theorem is all about. When it gives you that power or that ability to tie any two things together, no matter how seemingly separate they are. That's what I'm dealing with over here. It was never just the focus on genetics or the focus on quantum realm or the focus on ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. No, I'm going beyond all of that. Deal with the superior science. 
signification, semiosis, semiotic value, meaning. For example, if you somebody that's out there, uh, you, you call yourself a necromancer or you deal with the dead or whatever you do. Well, then I would implore you to study necrosemiotics. The meanings and symbols surrounding death. But you think you know everything. You think you got everything caught up and tied up together. And you think you got it all down pat. You ain't got to listen to me. But just know that there is somebody like me out here that's speaking about something no one else seems to want to deal with. Or seem to be on the, 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 the brink of or, or whatever. They're not dealing with that. So as you deal with something like holography, which, you know, uses meaning and semiosis to tie everything together, that means I can read any event. I can read your events. I can read your life. I can read anything. I know how to read. Yes. Yeah. I know how to read. And I, like I said, people use crutches. Like, for example, you use tarot cards, you use bones, you use snake skin. I've seen people use bark. They use all these different tools to help them read and divine and get spiritual messages from the other realm or whatever you don't even need all that another key word you can know is omnimancy you know what mancy means mancy means divination omnimancy or holomancy is your ability to read anything and get the meaning from it I want to teach you how to read. Mm. Even your dreams, yo. You should be able to read your dreams, no problem. So it's worth the study of how did we lose interpretation of what our dreams mean? How did we lose that time? How, do, how did that be fade into, into nothing? Like where... Why aren't we able to collectively and accurately, let me use that word, accurately read our dreams? It's a lost art. Oneromancy is the word. Oneromancy means the divination of dreams. So you have people who actually know how to read their dreams or not. But whether they know how to read it or not, they're placed in the position of getting messages from other worlds or other realms you know, to relay them to themselves or relay them to anybody looking to know anything. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have prophetic dreams where, you know, something that's going to happen a day or two later was in your dream first or the semblance of it was in your dream. And then you was able to pick up on that and read it. And now you can prepare for what's to come. You know what I'm saying? I do that all the damn time. It's part of my dream genome thesis. It's in this book. I put it in this book. The dream genome thesis, whole chapter. It's chapter 18. Hold on. Let me let me pull it out for you because you don't y'all don't be believing in nobody. Y'all don't be y'all y'all want all the proof and I'm gonna show and prove. I'm going to show and prove. Not just talk, and we're gonna show and prove. So I got the dream genome thesis right here in the book. You say, I see what you, I see, you know what you're talking about. I don't talk chat over cheap teachers. I'm in the background. Well, that's, Hey, while you're back there, learn semiotics, <laughs> learn that semiosis. You feel me? Learn it. This book right here in the ISIS thesis, like this is an, a good introduction into semiotics. You got a person who told you she's part of Semiotic Society of America. And there was also this thing floating around that, you know, Judy K. King did not write the book, but a group of people wrote it and she was just the face of it. Well, I, I can't go up against it if she tells you who the people is. So whether she's the true author or the whole Semiotic Society of America is the author, it doesn't matter to me. It's the point that they're talking about semiotics and they're they're um, comparing and co like correlating different meaning, different semiotic values from one 
part of education to another part of education. So you talk about all these different fields of study combined in one book. It's called a uh, transdisciplinary approach to learning or education. That's another key point of this book, the transdisciplinary approach. Because a lot of people, they're trained to just deal with one, one field of study and be an expert or a specialist so-called in that one particular field of study, and they never venture out to see how different fields of study correlate to the ones they are proclaimed experts in. Talk about it in this book, too. I definitely deal with experts in this book. Woo! Woo! It's, it's a literal, it's a literary tongue lashing in this one. Woo! I go in on them. Yeah, you, you calling yourself an expert or a specialist and all that? Well, let me put you to the test. Let me put you through the rigors. Let me, let me see. You know what I'm saying? Because some people don't like being tested. They don't like being examined. They don't like being tried. But I'm like, hey, you can test, try, whatever I'm saying. Go ahead. You're invited. Like I told you, what mean, what is something that doesn't mean anything? And can you come up with a better grand unifying theorem or... Um, theory of everything to explain all things that exist see a lot of those grand unifying theorems and those theory of everything's they only deal with the physical realm and deal only with physics i'm talking about a grand unifying theorem that combines things that exist beyond physics don't your dreams exist don't your spirit or soul if that's what you're calling your inner that true self don't all these things exist we're going beyond the physical part of it because a lot of people have a materialistic mindset where it's like they only if, if it's not something that their physical senses can give them or process for them, then it doesn't exist. And that's that's bull. That's not the totality. You got emotions, you got feelings, you got thoughts. Are thoughts physical? How come your grand unifying theorem can't explain thoughts? Or dreams or spiritual activity, supernatural stuff. The holography is all about explaining it all. We don't leave nothing out. I say we don't leave nothing out. We don't leave nothing out. Because it's the whole thing. So you think this is too dense. Again, you need to go in it with the understanding that you are looking for meaning and signification. The human body, right? They like calling it a meat bag, meat stick, whatever. But regardless of the meat, there's bones in it too. There's blood, capillaries, you know, cartilage, all that stuff that goes into a human body. What does it all signify? You are, your physical body is a composite symbol. What does it signify? You got two eyes instead of eight. What does that mean? You got two ears instead of 28. What does that mean? You have one head on your body instead of three. What does that mean? You don't have eyes in the back of your skull. Why not? What does that mean? So when you start looking at yourself as the book, and what's, what's that book? Um... Where is it? Do I have it up here? Where the fuck is that book? It's over there behind some papers. The book, um, uh, Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. And then his, um, his um, I think it was the same, was it a chapter? And then he had a, like a, a smaller book known as uh, The Occult Anatomy of Man, where he explains in both of those um, works that human symbolism was at the heart of, of a lot of the religions from then to now. And they were secretly put into these sacred texts and you don't even know it. So you're reading about your own physical body and the way it works and your genetics and don't even fucking know it. But you created a whole theological religion off of it. That's the price of not knowing what things mean. You get misinterpretations, and now you misstepping. Now you're tripping over your own two feet. If only you knew how to read. I want to teach you, you and your brother, your sister, your mother, your papa, how to read. 
I don't know what accent that is. I just pull it up. Whatever accent to do, I think it was Czechoslovak. I don't know. He was Eastern European or whatever. I don't even know if my accent is accurate to that, but it's besides the point. What does it mean? A lot of people don't know what shit means. They've been given a set of meanings to know what it means, meaning that you were given a a um a false or an inaccurate set of semiotic values to the things that you think you know. So it's all about breaking out of that false semiotic value set and getting into a truer, more fuller, and you know what I'm saying, um, more accurate one. You know what I'm saying? Because my point is not to show you that you're wrong in what you think and believe. I'm not here to do that. My whole point is to show you where you're missing points, you're missing pieces to your understanding. Or where you may be limited based on the fact that you're not dealing with the whole. You're just dealing with parts and fractions. You know what I mean? But that's really all I needed to say here. I ain't trying to go over an hour. I'm going to keep it within the hour. So, and this is the last thing I want to say, though. I don't, it, this might go over an hour, but, you know, people that, you know, then they emailed me and inboxed me and commented on this stuff, talking about, oh, you need to teach this. Uh, I would love for someone to break this stuff down and teach it and because it's too dense or I, I don't really get it. I don't really understand it or comprehend it. So then when I offer the course of Alchemy of the ISIS thesis, you know, people are like they didn't want to join because of maybe the fee. I mean, I was only really charging like maybe like 150 for it. And that's for my time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not charging you to just to make money off of you. It's like that takes time to teach you this stuff. You know what I mean? So if you don't value what's being taught to you or shown to you, then, you know what I'm saying, what's the point of coming out here telling it to you? I don't need to tell you anything about it. It's not a need. Y'all came to me asking me about it. You know what I'm saying? So if you are interested in something like that, again, go. it's right here at the banner at the bottom of this video. Patreon.com slash holography. Let me know you're serious about it and we can go there. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot of work to sit here and be in front of people and tell them this stuff. It takes time and effort. It does. So today you just I just told you really like a secret to being able to read this stuff. So just based on that, you should be able to go back to not just this book, but any book you've ever read or will read or reading now and be able to extract semiotic value out of it. Accurate semiotic value. You know what I'm saying? Make sure we preface it with that word accurate. Because, again, misinterpretation can lead to misstep. Misstep can lead to you tripping over your own two feet. And now you're in a bunch of shit you don't know how to get out of. But again, I'm Al Akkad, author of Holography. Make sure you get the book. It's at www.c. See how it's all screaming, screaming at the bottom of the page there? www.holographer.com slash the hyphen book. Make sure you get it. You get the autograph copy and you get the ebook. So you can read it on whatever device you can read it on. You, you, iPad, iBook, whatever they got. And that's my time. Remember, signification, semi uh, semiosis, uh, 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 semiotic value.